So we should be good. We should have audio. So today we're going to be taking a look at an 820-3476 that does not turn on. Um, we get a green light in the charger, but we get no fan spin, no heat from the CPU. It is dead. So plug the charger in. You guys can see green, uh, orange light and our fan is not spinning our CPU is not getting hot so it is not getting power so first rail we check we are we know we have PP3v4 too because we get a green light in the charger so our first rail we need to check is PP bus G3 hot because that is our main 12 volt rail and without that nothing else will work so Let's open a board view. It is thirty-four seventy-six. Let me find it here. That's right. These do not have a dedicated board view. This will use a board view from a thirty-five thirty-six. Will work only difference is the RAM so over here to the board view first thing we need to check is PP bus G3 hot let's see where this comes from find we could find this on the backlight backlight fuse which is F7700 so let's go over to the backlight fuse And let's have a look here. So, let's see, this board looks fairly clean. No, but we'll get to the issue. Move my leads out of the way. F7700. It's going to be right there, the component right next to the shunt resistor. We're going to measure one lead on ground, of course. And we have four volts. Four volts is no good. Um, on the schematic, you can see the beginning of the schematic where all the power rails are. You'll see that this is supposed to be 12.56 uh, volts. So let's have a look at the schematic. I don't think Apple will have a problem with the schematic on here. So let's have a look here. So 34.76. Let me open up the schematic again. So let's look at the, the power block diagram. Let's find it here. Before power enters the system, let's just do a search. All right, so. MagSafe DC jack right here. Power comes in, goes to the U7000. We're just going to ignore most of this right now. We have our 3.42 volt power supply, which is PP342. We have a green light, so we know that's present. Let's keep going down. So DC in, let's go to the next one. Come on, where are you? So. We see we have power going through L7130, Q7130, um, and then we have U7100, which is the buck controller IC for PP bus G3 hot and also controls battery charging. So this is our U7100 area. Uh, let's have a look because if this is messed up, this is not going to tell the FETs to open properly. So we're getting four volts. That's too low. So something, something between here and here is messed up. So this is probably not telling this fed to open and close properly. So let's go back over to look at the U7000 area and let's see what the U7000 area looks like. So let's find it. So 
So that does not look like happy ISL. See how the pads, especially on these resistors right here, let me get my tweezers. So, see right there, it does not look all that healthy. And these resistors right here, let's see, I'll zoom in a little bit more. See how the pad is corroded and falling apart under it? That is no good. So let's see, Aaron Summers finally catching live stream. You've been on here before, I'm pretty sure. So let's tilt the board a little bit if we can and let's look. Pretty sure you guys can already see the issue on our ISL. So one pad that's burned. This is a challenge with the microscope camera. So let's check our current sense. But I, we already pretty much know what the issue is. So our current sensing resistors are going to be on pins 17 and 18 and 27 and 28 of the ISL. So pins 17 and 18 are going to be right here. Now measure on the chip, not here. Oftentimes you'll measure on the capacitor on the pro points and it's going to read normally. But the this the path between here and the chip is going to be blown. So measure on the chip if possible. Now sometimes if you have big reader leads this is not going to be possible. So just remember that. So we are going to look here. So let's just see we need resistance mode not diode mode. We have 5.4.9 ohms right there. The path to the chip looks pretty good, but we'll check anyway. 4.5 ohms, that's within limits. Um, I like to see like about 3, sometimes less than 3, but 4.5, that is not going to cause our issue. So next one is over here. This should be about 20, 20, 22. Hmm open line that is not good because what does open line mean it means that one of our resistors is blown so is it you 10.4 ohms it's not you 10.3 ohms it's not you so what's the issue so we measured right here we could measure on these probe points right here to check our shunt resistor and that's measuring good so see how this area, see how you guys probably can't see all that well, but what I see is a lot different. So let me see, I wonder if I could turn this to get you guys to see what I see. Is that better maybe? No, see that's, now that's opposite, so I guess I'll have to be backwards. So let's zoom in. Have a look. You can see the trace does not look healthy. Um, it's hard to see, but that trace between that capacitor and that resistor does not look healthy. Neither does the other one. So my guess is we have a blown trace. And hmm, look at this. See this cap? See how the end is just blown off? I bet what we can do is get our tweezers and maybe we'll just see okay see this that has to go so what I'm guessing is we what we can do is just when I can do that I know it's corroded and I know it needs to go so and look at here see how corroded that was see like this one it's still solid I'm not gonna be able to to just knock it off like that but the other one was so corroded and falling apart that you know it doesn't care so see right here see this trace uh, you guys probably can't because of the exposure let me see what I can do let me lower my light just to show you so 
see that it does not look very good so what I'm gonna do this whole area we are going to repeal and replace so let's start let's see you see no problem uh, you should see a problem there so let's take note of our orientation of the ISL the eye is facing upwards so just remember that and we're going to start kick our fume extractor on because we do not want to breathe this stuff so I have my hot air set at 430 Celsius at 120 liters a minute of air and that's pretty much max the board is cold so let's give it a little preheat out of here you look nasty you look nasty So anytime you get an issue like this, just repeal and replace that entire area. You do not need it there. So now what I'm going to do is put some flux down. Now we get our iron. I always like to solder hot. This is really a preference, but I'm almost always at 800, sometimes 720. I'm going to be at 720 for this. You don't want to get too hot or else you'll just burn your flux right away. Um, but what we're going to do is get our iron, and we're just going to clean up. All the leaded solder. We're just gonna just drag our iron over it like that. A little more flux. Just load it on here. The board's gonna be ultrasonic, so more flux the better. It's just gonna make it flow a lot easier, you'll notice. So now that that's done. We're gonna wick, let's see. What Barlow lens you got on the camera? No Barlow lens on the camera. So let's wick and let's let's hope that we have a donor board now that we did all that. We have a donor board. The question is have I stolen everything? This looks suitable. Yep. What do you know? A donor board with nothing stolen off of it. So let's wick. Now, wicking on water damaged pads. Don't push your iron onto the pads. If you do that, you're going to tear it up. So what you want to do is put put your your wick down, rest your iron, and move the wick. Do not put pressure on the iron. I am putting no pressure on the, the iron right now. I'm just dragging the wick. I'm resting the, the soldering iron on the, the wick and I'm dragging it. Do not put put pressure on it. You will rip your pads, especially these that are all corroded and falling apart. Just kind of clean them up. See this right here? Should be able to scrape and salvage that. But these look pretty bad. We'll probably have to run some wires. We have not put leaded solder here yet. Between. Point 0.5 Barlow for the camera. Um, Wayne, can you please link me to that? I'm. Unless it came with it and I just didn't know what it was, so I put it back in the box. So, if 
Yeah, I'll probably get a bar though for this thing. No, oh, it didn't come with. Are you talking about a barlow for the 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 bottom of the scope? I I know I need one. I'll probably get a point seven. Um, so now we have a problem. So you see these pads that are kind of falling apart. The trace is still intact. I think we'll be okay. And here's our issue. So if you remember correctly. You remember our issue with the, one of the current sense resistors was reading open line? Let's see if I can show it to you. See the open line? So, have a look. Right there. So look where, see the break in, in the trace? That's our issue right there. That's why we have no PP bus G3 hot, and that's why um, our current sense is messed up. So, what we're going to do, we're going to try and utilize that pad, but we'll, we'll have to run a wire. Hopefully, not to under the ISL. I think what we could do, we could do it to the probe point. Because, let me tell you something, running wires under a QFN package is not fun. So, let's try and avoid running wires to a QFN pack under a QFN package. Um, same thing right here. Mm, I think we're okay right there. No, this exposure is absolutely. Exposure. Let me adjust this exposure. This is absolutely lousy. Let's see. Here, turn it down. Like. even worse all right let's just leave it there okay so what we're gonna do now is get our iron it's a reducer um, yeah I'm not sure on this camera, this is just the cheap M scope camera, so I mean the field of view is a hundred percent different from what I see. I mean I see a nice wide picture and you guys see something totally different, so let's clean our ISL area. So we'll have to wick. Don't try and wick with uh, lead free solder on the pads. Put lead and solder. Um, it'll just make it so much easier on yourself because with lead free, you're not going to get it's not going to clean the pads real well. You'll notice it. The whole microscope camera thing is new to me, so. What do you mean by that, Anthony? I'm not sure what that is. Let's see. It says error 404 on that link. Anthony, you're a mod now on this channel. I 
We'll never get enough mods here. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get a Barlow for the, uh, the camera. I mean the not the camera the scope I mean the the working distance is not bad but it's not the greatest it's not like my old one either so That's why I like the J tip. See how well you guys probably can't see, but to get around stuff when it's in an awkward position, it really helps. Come on, accept solder. These pads don't want to accept solder. There we go, there's one. There's two. So we got this area all prepped, I think. What we're going to do now is rebuild it. Let's get our donor. Um, the donor is going to be exactly the same, only less messed up. And let's start. So the first thing that I want to do is our current sense. Now, here's a tip. Low airflow. You do not want high airflow when transferring stuff. What, what you'll... Uh, do is blow components away, especially on these small resistors. Use a low airflow to make it easier on yourself. Preheat the board. Um, another thing, you know, if you're removing components, it doesn't really matter. But when you're taking good components, um, a lot of times you'll put your tweezer on it. Um, it'll be almost at that point of melting solder, and you'll fling it off the board. So just preheat a little bit, nothing too intensive. Just get the board hot, and then. Resistor, first current sense resistor goes right here. See, this is the kind of work I like, you know, just rebuilding stuff. I don't like you know, running a million wires under a board. I don't like finding why platform reset L is missing. Stuff like that. This kind of stuff that I like. our next component that's missing looks like it's going to be all this really is is Legos 
small Legos, that's it. That require expensive equipment. And my smoke detector is probably going to go off because my fume extractor, I see it not pulling the fumes up. What's next? Wait a second. So Okay, we're rebuilt. Let's put a lot of flux down. We're gonna do it once we have all that flux down. Actually, you know what? Let's go get a new ISL. Let's let's touch up the pads in the ISL and let's get a new chip. I see something concerning here. Zoom in and have a better look. No good. No good at all. So let's see if we can fix these pads up. So see how these pads are corroded? It's not good. So what we gotta try and do. You know, these pads are just fine. Just a little oxidation. We're just gonna scrape. Now this one looks a little suspicious, but we're just going to scrape, hold the board, scrape it. Pads are just fine. Alright, so let's check. This is going to go to this cap. Zoom out a little bit. We may have an issue here. We actually might have a break. Um, because when I measure, it does not beep. Wait a second here. No, we should be beeping there. So what I'm going to try and do now is get my iron. 
and try and make that connection again. But I think I can't tell. Oh, we should have a trace there. Do we? No, we're broken. Oh, I don't want to run a wire under a QFN tonight, but oh well. Let's see. What I'm going to try and do. See, this is how you know you're too hot on your solder. If it starts doing that, you're too hot. I'm at 750. Um, coffee really loves them solder pads. Yep, it does. Likes to eat them up. We still might be good on these pads though. Let's just do this. We are too hot. Let's lower our temperature a little bit. Put on a 700. 700 um, is too cold for a lot of things, but in this case it's going to be just fine. Yeah, you can see the break now. you guys talking about one of a percentage of liquid damage devices are coffee um, hard to say I mean it really it could be anything you don't know what you're getting it could be coffee it could be water it could be puke it could be cat pee you never know what you're getting you know so just just remember that Sorry if none of you guys have thought of that before, but yes, puke damage devices exist. In that case, I highly suggest that you don't send them here. If something's been puked on, find uh, I don't know who you'd find that would want to do that. But I have a feeling that if I got a puke damage device, I would just say, uh, don't fix that. Hate using gloves, yeah. I don't use gloves very often either. But if I think that something's been puked on, definitely. I mean, cat pee isn't that bad. But I would still prefer wearing gloves, but. Yeah, let's see. Now that it's too dark, that pad's gonna be a problem. Where is it? I really think I can make that work. I really, I, I don't know if it's me thinking I can make it work or it's just Miles Blakesley. I've done a puke damage air. It's yeah, it was nasty. I uh. I don't want to, you know, and here's the thing. What I see is a lot of college students have MacBook Airs. Okay? So they drink, they party, and when they're drunk, what's right in front, what's right in front of the, them when they're about to puke after they've been drinking? Their MacBook Air. So what do they do? They puke on their MacBook Air. And then guess what? Someone has to fix that. I've used 
I mean, uh, gloves, uh, anytime I could even, yeah, well, when there's, uh, you know, it just depends on the computer. All right, I'm thinking, I want to make this pad work. I don't want to run a wire. I'm thinking I could just bridge it, but I don't know. What I mean by bridge is scrape away the trace. Oh, there's pad there. There is pad there. Just a little scraping. We could always run a wire after the ISL is down. It's more of a pain, but it's going to be less of a pain. It's still a pain, I mean, but it's going to be less of a pain than, than running wires and setting the chip down. Oh, that's perfect. That pad is just fine. Yeah, I don't know why that's not measuring on my meter. It's not. Let's see. There should be no reason why. Let's see if I can. All right. See, now we're good. Now we're beeping. That's a little high though. That's my resistance. Twenty six ohms, that's garbage. Uh toilet phones are a lot a lot better than computers that have been puked on. See if I can make this work again. Come on. Oh, and that's the trace right here. There should be no reason why that's not having continuity to the capacitor unless my only other Um, 24 ohms, maybe that's just how it's supposed to be maybe that's the resistance of the circuit we're beeping I think that'll work if it doesn't work we could always come back and run a wire take a clean one exactly, toilet water is delicious You know, we're, we're all component level technicians here and we're talking like we're like janitors or something. <laughs> I guess that's what we are, is overpaid um, motherboard janitors. So, let's zoom out. Let's get our brand new ISL. You can get these at store.rossmangroup.com. I always get them from Lewis and have no issues. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you here, not all of you know how to solder this chip properly. Don't worry about it being lined up. So, don't worry about it being lined up. What you do is get your hot air, low air flow, like 30, and do I have that on the right way? Yes, hopefully. Don't put your ISL on the wrong way either. Bad things will probably happen. Uh, I gotta do something about this fume extractor situation. Another thing is uh, poor soldering on the ISL. You can cook your SMC. Alright, see how it kind of fell into place? Right? 
Alright, let me, I gotta figure something out here. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this back ahead. I don't wanna set up this one. Okay. This way, if I move this thing back more, it's closer to the fume extractor. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do is just tilt this and make sure it's lined up. Remember on the ISL, the way it's designed, see that looks good. Let's see, if you guys can't see. It's like a nicely soldered ISL. We're not done yet, no. Who can tell me what we need to do next? You know all that solder on that center pad? We gotta get rid of it. We wanna push that chip down flat. This would probably work, but it's better this way, so more flux. All right, I'll zoom out so you guys can see fully. And heat your chip. Keep your tweezers down on it. Until you see it shoot out the sides. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. Almost there, I think. There we go. Keep heat on it for about you know five to ten more seconds. What this is going to do is push all the solder out from the center pad. It's also going to ensure that we have a good good connection to the board. Um, so what we're going to do now, and now remember, we have an issue to address. If we turn this on now, what we're going to get is the same thing. We're going to get nothing. So. We have to run a little wire for our current sensing. Just gonna clean it up. All right, now let's get some acetone. Acetone cleans up flux real nice, so uh, get some Q-tips ready because this stuff dries too quickly. And we're only doing this; it's just going to make it a little bit easier on us to um, just to measure to um, to measure properly. It's just going to make it a little easier. See how quick this is. Sometimes I like isopropanol better because acetone evaporates too quickly and it makes it harder to clean. We we don't have to be perfectly clean, just sort of clean. Another thing is isopropanol usually won't damage your uh, any kind of plastics. So, okay, let's see. I like the idea of an articulating stand, but don't want to worry about drift. Yeah, the, I have the boom stand, but the issue that I have with this is you see right here. When you tilt the head, it wants to to move this to the side and I don't like that but it'll work all right so now pins 28 728 let's see where our broken trace is if anywhere so I have a feeling if I mounted that base on my bench it might no I guess it wouldn't make a difference say it would probably topple the bench but hey now we have proper we don't even need to do anything we should we have proper yeah 20 21 ohms we're good we had a blown resistor or it was one of those uh, capacitors was messed up 
So now we have alcohol on the board, but I don't think it's going to matter. Not in it where the area it is, but let's just dry it a little bit. The CPUs don't like alcohol. They usually won't turn on. It won't work with stuff under the CPU. But in this case, there's none. So, the question is, is will this work now? I hope so. But, we shall see. Still, okay, let's measure what PP bus G3 hot is. That is no fun. I think it's that one trace, it's measuring 20 something ohms. But let's measure and see what this is. Of course, we might have other issues too. If this is 12 volts, we at least know one of our issues is fixed. Now we're worse off than when we started. We have 4 something, 0 0.4. So let's have a look here. Maybe soldering wise? I don't think so. It's always best to double check. Do not see an issue. We could have got a dead chip too. Excellent there. Excellent there. On this side. It's good. Okay, so let's look here. What could have went wrong? Hmm. What is missing here? My guess is we got a dead ISL. Right after I said that I don't have problems with Lewis's chips. So it wouldn't surprise me that does happen from time to time and given its voltage it's a possibility but let's check right here what just Current sense looks good. Let's see. Yep. All right, my guess is we just got a dead ISL. This happens from time to time. So, hang on one second. Let's look at this board and let's measure What in the world are you guys talking about? Owned by somebody. Oh, um. Yeah, I know who you guys are talking about, Soren.
Yeah, his videos, are, I've watched a couple of them. He's, uh... He's a pretty good guy. He's smart. He can fix, you know, PC motherboards and stuff. And that's something I can't do. Every time I try and fix a PC motherboard, it ends, uh... Badly. So I'm going to measure what I think our issue is. I want to measure resistance. There's one of these caps right here. I think this one. Yeah, and see, I'm getting point. I mean, we're, we're, we don't have any resistance there. So we're going to have to run a wire. Now, my concern is, should we run a wire, then replace the ISL again, or replace the ISL and hope? But you know what? Just go ahead and run a little jumper. And that's going to be a real pain. But we'll do it. I think the trace is bad. You know, just because we have continuity, it's reading a really high resistance, so the trace might have blew up. You never know. Let's see if I can. I can't really see it. It should work. I mean, the trace looks okay. Let's check again. I really don't want to do it. Run jumper first. Who would be? You guys are not talking about me, I hope. No, okay. Yeah, I know he's, he's 30 years older than me or something, but. No, PC motherboard repairs, I just. Okay, I see where the trace is blown. I see it, it's burned. Alright. So this is going to be hard to see on the microscope, but I see an area of the trace that's actually darkened and burned. That is no good. That means our trace is burned. So we need to run a small jumper. Um, this probably this won't be that bad to do. But then again, we may be doing it for nothing because we may have a dead ISL. Get our jumper wire. This might be a little bit bigger. I really doubt Rossman sold your dodgy ISL. Okay. It's not Lewis's fault if an ISL comes bad from the factory. He has no way of testing it before um, before he sends it to me. It's happened before. It happens with... It doesn't just happen with his chips. It happens with everybody's chips. It's part of it. So don't be saying thinking that I'm... You know, accusing Lewis of selling me a bad chip. It happens. It's not. It's something you can't avoid. You know, I'm not gonna go call Lewis and say that that uh, you sold me a, a bad ISL and I want a refund. No, it's a two dollar chip. I'm not gonna do that. You know. So we have our jumper wire. The more you buy, the better chance you have to win. Exactly. You know, I'm not going to complain over one, one or two dead chips. It's simp it happens. It's part of the job. Uh, 
I hate running jumpers. I don't want it to put it in a position that's going to short from this other guy, so we're going to. Good enough for me. I'm going to touch this up. Hopefully it's just the trace, not the chip. The chip is nothing for me to replace, even if it is. I mean... Oh, come on. It happens. It's part of it. I get dead ISL from time to time. I'd rather replace 10 ISLs and put a MacBook back together. There, that's, oh, come on, really? <laughs> so I got a good solder joint and it bridged. Let's just tear this off. We need more flux. You can't bridge even if you want to. Thing does not want to go onto the chip. Come on. Alright, that's a good solder joint. Don't see any bridges. We should be good to go now. Let's check resistance between the capacitor and the, um, the chip again. And that's what I want. There's no barely any resistance. So hopefully, hopefully, Please spin. I'm tired. I want you to spin. Is my fan plugged in? Yep. All right. Still no spinning fan. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's actually let's measure our voltage again. So now we're going to have to replace the chip again. And watch, it's going to be a dud chip. I knew it. I should have changed the chip before the jumper. Because now I'm going to have to redo that jumper. Zero point seven volts, that's not good. Okay, so let's change the ISL again. You can bridge if you want to. Yeah, I could bridge it.
All right, I'm gonna pull an ISO off the donor because at least the donors I know pass um, testing. Let's see, we're gonna have to touch this up. Yeah, just a hair. No, you don't. I don't feel like pulling it from the donor. We'll pull it from my ISO bin. Too much solder on the center pad, I don't like that, so I'm gonna I don't like putting too much solder on the center pad. But if it happens, it happens. Alright, we look good. Alright. Get a new chip. Where did I put them? I thought I had an open reel. I don't want to open a new reel. Here's my other reel. Okay, let's hope this works. Let's hope that this thing turns on. So I know when it's time to take a when it's time to go to sleep. See my tweezers? Make sure we're not bridged anywhere, or just to check our alignment on the chip before we squash it. We're good. I start that shaky. It really depends with me. You don't need steady hands to do this. Of course that happened. Oh. Alright, now, if any of you guys caught on to what just happened, you know why this one stuck. Because now we have a bridge. Right, get out of there. Now we gotta fit back our jumper. But first we gotta check and make sure we're not bridged anywhere because 
we have a very high probability now that we're bridged. Let's have a look. this jumper back shouldn't be all that hard this time oh and we don't want we don't want this touching right there so uh, we'll figure that out after it's soldered should we have the right yeah my other pair of tweezers Where's my other pair of tweezers? I need here they are. Constantly looking for my tweezers. It's always where are my tweezers? See this I know is not a rabbit hole because it's just gonna take some thinking. Hopefully I can fix it tonight, but if not gonna get done all right now please I want this fan to spin I want this fan to spin please spin seriously all right. Why are we getting no PP bus G3 out? It should be something simple. This should be something very simple in the ISL area. We're just overlooking something. That fan, nope. That fan is not spinning yet. Hey, and we just lost our green light. That's a clue. If we just lost our green light, did my charger die? All right, so we lost our green light in the charger. Why is that? Let's see. Because there's a capacitor stuck on the charger? Nope. So something died. Something told the ISL, nope, shut off, something's wrong. So let's measure what our PP bus G3 hot is. is zero volts so something just happened getting nothing on ACN probably Let's see sometimes the MagSafe um, adapters the wires can be a little frayed but I don't think that's this, the case in here Okay, so what's going on right now is something happened and the ISL said, nope, do not let that charger come on. So if we were to measure on ACM, I'm pretty sure it's one of these pins when we first turn on. All right, let's try and have a look and try and figure out what in the world told the ISL, nope, not shut off. So let's see. So our wires aren't touching anything. It looks really good. Oh, I see. Oh, that's our issue, right? No, that wouldn't be an issue, because that's on the same trace. But let's get rid of it. That's the probe point on that same trace, so that's not a problem. But still, I don't want that there. Yeah, 
that scared me for a second. But if you look, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but the trace goes right to that capacitor. So. Alright, so now that our ISL is being told to sh shut off right away, what could cause that? And current sense is usually not going to do it. What will do it is a short, so we need to check uh, PP bus G3 hot for a short. And now, this sounds crazy, but we know our other ISL was not bad. Always possible that we're getting. I've gotten controlled by bad chips before, but I don't think this chip is bad. Alright, now we have a dead short on PP bus G3 hot, so what shorted? My guess is what shorted was one of the FETs, Q7035 or Q7030. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to inject voltage um, and see what gets hot. And then we're going to get our FLIR and have a look. So let's solder wire to the backlight fuse, which is PP best G3 hot, and see what is shorted. Watch this be a, a true dead ISL from uh, just trolling us. If that ISL gets hot, I'll laugh. I'll laugh because it's this stuff always finds its way to happen to me. Regular charger or DC cord? No, this was a regular charger. But we know something's wrong. Because now we know we have a short on PP bus. Alright, so let's kick our voltage down. Look at the ISL, right? And here's what I'm going to do I'm going to clean it with some alcohol and I'll put alcohol on top. No, I don't know it's that, so let me just go over it with the flare real quick. You guys aren't going to be able to see the FLIR, so. I don't care what Lewis or Jessa say, this is a useful tool. Alright, we're going to do a full full amperage and we're going to just start slowly and see what gets burning hot. We're already pulling over an amp. We have a big short here. What's getting hot? Nothing because we're getting so hot that we're, we have such a big short that it's kicking. Alright, I'm going to turn What is shorted? Is it the ISL? Can I feel it in my finger? ISL's cold. Yeah, you do need to get a flare. Yeah, this thing, it just pulls. So I'm gonna see if I can. Yeah, okay, so what this is telling me with nothing getting hot and this being that dead of a short, something is not right. It could either be a bridge when we when the, you know when I said that uh, that thing the jumper when I saw that I said we have a high probability of a bridge well my guess is that it's bridge to ground under the IC so we're gonna take it off and look 
Um, it's very possible that it's bridged under the IC. I've had it happen once. Um, it, it's not all that common, but it can happen, and then we'll worry about running our jumper again after. So let's pull the, the ISL off again, and let's have a look underneath and see if we can find a bridge. I gotta get this thing done. It's getting late. Ah, see that? I've had this happen before. Here's a problem right there. That ain't is no good. So, just a ground pad. Not gonna cause any damage. It's gonna cause a short. It's gonna cause a big short. But that's a common thing. It happens. Um, Union repair poster response video. Lewis was using it wrong. Uh, I don't think Lewis was using it wrong. So, what we're going to do now is we are not going to put this jumper on until after the ISL is soldered because we don't want that happening again. up a little bit no Lewis um, I haven't even seen that whole video yet um, I'm sure Lewis wasn't using it wrong uh, on iPhones yeah that's gonna be lousy but on MacBooks no on MacBooks that's a perfect Yeah, you, when you're running wires under the ISL and stuff, be careful or that this will happen. See, when I left it on and soldered it, um, just stuff like that happens. So. It's something that you'll learn from, though. We're gonna do. We want. We don't want this here. Just go bye bye. And now get another chip because I'm not gonna reuse that one. I don't trust it. We could probably reuse it. It'd probably be fine, but I'd rather not do it. And this fan better spin this time. No. Push it down. I mean, it looks good. Yeah, we gotta push it down. Do it. Really, yeah. It's all lined up. Just gotta push it down now. Hopefully, that same thing is gonna happen. I 
I've had that happen before in the same place, and I have no idea. My only guess is the jumper provides like a pathway for the the um, the solder to flow. Seven hundred is a little too cold. We want to go higher than seven hundred. Seven twenty is usually a good temperature. All right now we're gonna check. PT bus is shorted. I don't think it will be. If it is, then I'm getting trolled. I don't think it will be though. Should be good. Still shorted. Why? Why would that still be shorted? And why is our solder finding its way where it shouldn't go? Now why does this stuff have to happen on camera? Why does all the repairs go successfully and then all of a sudden you decide to do a video and stuff like this happens? It doesn't look shorted there. So what what got messed up? Think about this. So the ISL is off. We're gonna measure again. Hopefully, all right. So we still have a short with the ISL off. Let's see. Let's heat it up. Our chip is still good, so we're gonna put this somewhere where it's safe. Um, let's inject voltage and see what the issue is. Let's see what what's shorting. Hopefully, it's not the SMC. If it's Q7030 or Q7035, was it short without the chip? Yes. So that was probably something that was shorted beforehand and we didn't check. Um, so let's... Hopefully this short isn't going to be one that's going to... My guess is it was shorted before we started working, but I never checked for a short. I just checked voltage and it was low, so I probably getting pulled down by something. Now also common on these as 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 much as I hate to say it, when you have a dead short on um, PP bus G3 hot, sometimes it could be the CPU. The way the FETs are, they sometimes can take a liquid hit and I better hope it's not the CPU. If I feel this heatsink getting hot from uh, when I inject voltage, uh, rest in peace but I'm hoping it's not that alright so let's get our flare let's hope that our CPU is not dead um, I really hope it's not, I'm, what I'm guessing is when the original ISL died it probably took out Q7035 or Q70 or whatever it is Q7031 um, I don't know off the top of my head um, so let's our FLIR, let's start low. The board's still really hot, so. Cooled it down some, power on, and let's. You nearly do what? I don't understand. Up our current just a little bit. Nothing getting hot yet. Let's start adding voltage. Start real low. 
nothing getting hot. Start like. Something over here. No. Alright, let's up our current all the way up. Hmm, what are you? Oh, one of our inrush fets. I think bore only at 3.3 volts. Let's hope our heat sink isn't. Heat sink's cold. All right, so we have max current. Let's up it to 12 something volts. I see our problem, but let's just see. We're at 8.6. Uh, over current protection kicked in. I see our problem. And the issue is now. I think what we actually did right now, I think we burned our short out because it was pulling a lot more amps than it was before. Let's take it to 12. No, we're pulling, we're pulling nothing now. So we actually, what we just did, we burned our short out of the board. So I know what, what was shorted. Um, I'm going to show you guys on the schematic what this thing does and how it correlates to our original issue and what happened. So with the ISL is a very important chip, but it also screws stuff up from time to time or this thing shorted and screwed up our ISL. It's hard to say what came first, but I think I know our problem. So what I saw getting hot. Was this little guy right here? That fit. Now, let's just see if we still have a short after injecting voltage into the board. If we do, I if we don't have a short, I know it went wrong. Hey, imagine that. No more short. So we burn the short out of this this component. So here's the problem. We could try just replacing, let's look on the schematic. We could try just replacing that, but let's go over to the schematic or the board view. So let's get our component number here. So here's U7100, right? Our guy that shorted is right here. Um, oh, this is for, uh, wait a second. That's for our three, that's for PP3V42. Hmm. Why would that get screwed up? Unless the MagSafe board is bad. No, I don't think so. So we don't have a short anymore. I saw this getting noticeably hot on the, the, um, let's see, U7090. So, for this to fail, we wanted these pets uh, right here. I don't think so. Let's put a new one on. Let's put a new one on. And then let's put the ISL. Let's put the ISL back on first. Why that shorted makes no sense. Why that shorted makes no sense to me because we had a green light before
Should I use the same ISL? Always a chance the ISL did something. You never know. I'm going to put this guy back here because we don't know if he's bad yet. Uh, my only guess is... Well, I really, I don't have any any guess of why that, that did what it did because it, that should not have shorted. I'm getting tired, so if this doesn't work, then I'm coming back to this in the morning. I mean, if this doesn't work, then I know the ISO orientation is proper I hope I think unless I'm not tired let's see no it's right or ghosts maybe ghosts probably I call them gremlins the thing that can take a computer that's working perfectly in the slot for days testing and then all of a sudden you go to put it in the box to ship it and it doesn't work anymore. That happens. I did not want that to happen. They will fix it tonight after you give up. Yeah. I'm getting at that point where I'm going to come back to this in the morning. I was really hoping it was just going to be an ISL, but when is anything just an ISL here? It's always the ISL, then this, and then the other thing, and then five things after that. be too easy, yep. Yeah. I've had some like that the past week, but that streak is over. Come on, beat. Not even gonna worry about this jumper right now, but I'm gonna go through. Yeah, it's a 3B. 3B4, 2 years later. Never trust those guys. See, the thing is, this was ultrasonically clean. So that may have been corroded and I just didn't see it. Let's get off of my board. This board has so much flux, it's. Don't even need to. Just get out of here. Come on, quick. Eat up. There we go. Almost. There we go. Uh, looks healthy. I don't see why, what would have caused it to short, but. I don't know. I can never trust 3G42 regulators.
I'm not working this. That is not properly soldered by any means. It's a flux. And then you are gonna go back into place. There we go. It makes sense though if there was a short on PP um, no sense okay. Please work, green light. Still no green light. Yeah, this is one to come back on in the morning. I don't understand what got messed up or why this is happening, but zero volts again. Yeah, this. Well, we don't have a short anymore. But we have no volts, no voltage on PP bus G3 hot. Now let's check PP3 V42. Why this is happening, I don't know. Just check. Do we have anything on DC in? And if not, what I'm going to have to do is completely wipe out and rebuild the entire circuit so all the MOSFETs for DC in and 12 volt rail have to come off the board because I've had these kind of issues before where you're just gonna kill yourself replacing everything uh, one by one in the circuit and it's not gonna work what you need to do is yeah see we're not getting any anything on a DC in so something is telling the charger shut off so what I'm gonna have to do is go through and just wipe out and hey look on this inrush fit no that's fine wait a second no I don't think that's a problem no so I'm gonna have to go through and I'm gonna replace pretty much everything relating to the 12 volt rail 
I'm gonna have to replace probably both these MOSFETs. Um, I have to figure out why the charger is, isn't um, turning on, I guess. And again, this is why I want a, uh, a MagSafe a, um, power supply that's not gonna shut off. And this, I bet this has a couple cables that I could solder and make an adapter to, but since some is getting screwed up with the eye. Oh, wait a second. I know why we're not working. I forgot to run the jumper wire. That's why we're not working. Silly me forgets to run jumper wire. Where are we? Now we have actually, after that last soldering, we have solid. Now we have less than an ohm now after, after soldering. So that jumper wire is not needed anymore, unfortunately. Let's check our current sense one more time. I don't see anything I'm missing over here. Could it be a simple one wire issue? I doubt it. Check this other one. Mm, 4.3, no issues there. Let's just look, see if my soldering may be is subpar. Mm. No. Only concerning pin I see is one on the end, but again, I don't think that's our issue. I'm going to touch it with the iron to see, but I really, really don't think it's a problem. I'll try, but I don't think that's our issue by any means. Let's double check this, but I honestly, again, with the charger being shut off like this, I've had the, it could be the DC inboard. I highly doubt it. Wait a second here. I don't know if it's my eyes playing tricks on me, but yeah. Yeah, this one, hard to say what happened, but um, how does solder pad 12 look on? We're talking about SMC, BC, AC, okay. Let's see. I think that was one I just touched up, but. Oh, 3v4 too. Let's see. I don't think, 
that's our issue, but let's look. I'm thinking this is more something with one of the MOSFETs for PP Best G3 Hot. So we know here's how I can make that assumption. We know um, no that pin is good. So here's my conclusion. Um, so we had low voltage on PP Bus G3 Hot. So the ISL controls how quick those MOSFETs open. When the ISLs fail like that, there's a good chance that it messed up one of our one of our MOSFETs, and that's either going to be um, that's going to be Q7520. Not Q7520. Where is it? They're around here somewhere. I'll look at the schematic, but. Since we had low voltage, Q7130 um, probably got messed up. And then we put a new ISL. Since Q7130 was messed up, we put a new ISL on, and Q7130 messed up the new ISL, and it gets to be this cycle. So I've had that happen before, or vice versa. Q7130 might have been bad, messed up the ISL and we get stuck in the cycle of replacing the ISL and having it get messed up again. I've had that happen a couple times. I'm hoping that's not the issue. Um, uh, 7130. But I think that might be our issue and that explains why we're having these kind of issues where it's dying after the ISL. So here's Q7130. Hopefully I have that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. Hope I do. Ah, it's stolen. I'll probably have to order that MOSFET. Chain reaction of fixing, exactly. Um, I've had it happen. It's just sometimes when when you replace when the ISL screws something up and especially given so out of this we're gonna get we're supposed to get our twelve point fifty six volts. We're having we're getting four volts, so good chance the ISL messed this up. Again, this is messed up. This messes the, the new ISL up, and we just get stuck in a cycle. So the proper thing to do, we need to replace Q7130 and the ISL at the exact same time. And then we should be good to go after that. Um, if it's not, then that's going to be something very miserable. Another thing, when when PP Best G3 Hot won't come on on these boards and you know your generation circuit is okay and you just can't get it to come on despite replacing all the MOSFETs what I've seen is CPU is bad um, it ends up pulling too much current this runs off PP Bus S5 HS computing as you see this is going to this is going to run off of your 12 volt rail um, off PP Bus G3 Hot so I've had these exact same boards do the same thing. PP best G three hot's low. I try and restore it, and it ends up being this. The processor is bad. Um, now, if we could look at these FETs, if we see any sign of liquid near these FETs, we probably know that our CPU is dead, and that's why our 12 volt rail is being held low. So let's have a look. And then after this, I'm ending the stream. I'm tired. Um, Oh, come on, really? Mm, yep, you know what? See what I see? I was hoping that this would not have been the case, but you see the corners of these pads? This is not good. I know, you see the corner where you could see the copper? It corroded right there and if that's the case see I can't tell if that's corroded let's look at the other board see how that's kinda gone there's a very good chance that our issues now are being caused by a dead CPU so see how it's kinda gone around that pad I'm not giving up just yet uh, maybe not. See how this looks? 
No, I think that's actually okay. That looks the same on this donor board. Not saying this didn't get hit by, by liquid here, but my main concern, uh, I don't know. It looks like this one was corroded. I see corrosion, I see oxidation. That looks like it was corroded. It just has that look compared to the it looks shinier. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's my eyes. I don't know though. If this see the if this wasn't if wait a sec. That cap looks funny. That cap looks really funny right there. So it almost does look like our CPU area was hit um, by liquid. It's hard to say. I would have to see it. I'm not giving up just yet. But that, okay, so let's measure V quarter ground. If V quarter ground is anything less than 15 or 20, I'm going to say this is a dead CPU because that explains our 12 volt rail being low to begin with is a dead CPU. It's going to hold it low. So let's measure usually like 9 ohms. No, 65 ohms to ground. No, that's fine. 65 ohms are gone, that CPU is fine. So that leaves us, it is an issue in generation, I think. I don't know. I'm going to have to, to do more work on it, wipe it out. And this one was not going to be a fun one. So we either have, I really doubt it's a dead CPU now after my, my V-Core. Um, I think it's an issue with one of our FETs. Um, that I'm just going to have to wipe out and rebuild that entire circuit. Um, I don't think it's a CPU. It's a still a possibility. I really, really highly doubt it now. But this was not a fun one. And I'm going to change the title. So thank you all for watching and hopefully we'll get this fixed tomorrow. If not, we should have some more repairs. I don't know if I'm going to stream them tomorrow. It's really dependent on how I feel. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.